Right, hello there ladies and gents, welcome to another repair video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Xbox One S which has been sent in. This particular console has been sent in because it has no power, so we're going to take a look, we're going to see what happens and then we're going to see if we can get it fixed. So, I'm plugging the power supply and I'm going to turn it on and we get nothing at all. Okay, so that's completely and utterly dead. So that is actually a good thing and the reason that I say that is because if the console was a beep on beep off situation where we press the power button it beeps and then just turns off then what that would mean usually is that there's an issue with the ram or the gpu however because it's complete no power we're probably going to have a short on the 12 volt rail so what i mean by that is that when you plug in the power supply the power supply sits here or rather that way so the power supply sits there and 12 volt comes out of this power supply here and what tends to happen is when one of the MOSFETs or something like that goes bad, we tend to get a short on the 12 volt rail which pulls everything down to ground and stops the console from turning on. That's going to be a perfect candidate usually for the thermal camera. So let's take it apart, let's see what happens and then we'll see if we can get it fixed, shall we? So, like I said, this is likely going to be a short on the 12 volt rail and it does look like someone's already messed with this. However, it shouldn't be too much of a problem as long as they haven't caused any more damage to the system. So I'll fast forward through the disassembly process. We have got some damage here already, but we won't we won't worry about that. Okay, right, so the first thing that I've noticed is that this console has been subject to probably quite a lot of heat, if I'm honest. Uh, there's quite a lot of burnt dust and things all over the chassis, as you can see there. So this has been subject to quite a lot of heat. So that's probably not going to be such a good thing if I'm being honest but the first thing I'm going to do is just try another power supply now the company that sends me these they tend to check things like the power supply before sending them to me they can do basic stuff like that where they can change the power supply and things however they don't tend to go any further than that because he hasn't got the knowledge or the soldering experience to be able to do anything more so that's when they come to me. I will give it a try anyway with my own supply. Uh, nope, just as I expected, we get absolutely nothing at all there. So, that's fine. So, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to carry on disassembling and just give it a visual inspection and then I'll pop it, I'll pop the multimeter on and get some readings, see if we can figure out what's actually going on with it. Okay, so I'm just going to pop the heatsink clamp off. So this heatsink clamp feels like it's been off before. It may have been for a service or something, or maybe someone's already had a go at this, I don't know. But I'm sure we'll figure it out. There we go. Okay. So what I want to do first of all then, oh that's very stuck on there that is. Hmm. That's not such a good thing. This has been subject to quite a lot of heat i mean that should just fall out of there and it's not uh that's just, that's been subject to a fair bit of heat that has yeah right i can see something already one click one quick glance and i can see something already so if we take a look at the board when we plug the power supply in, we've got the 12 volt rail which comes in here. This is kind of like the connectors that we see on graphics cards and on on other computers. And the first thing I notice is that down here, we have some visible signs of something on this little resistor here. So just there, we see some signs of burn marks on phase one. Uh, I call that phase one because it's the closest phase to the 12 volt supply. So what I want to do then is just give the board a little brush down to get rid of some of this dust so I can see a bit better what I'm doing. Okay, that's a little bit better. I can give it a proper clean once we've got it fixed, if we get it fixed that is. Um, but the one thing I'm noticing with this resistor is like I said that it's burnt. And the problem with that is that a resistor is kind of like a fuse. And the way that a fuse will burn out is basically literally that it will burn out. So it will get so hot because of excessive current 
um, and basically what will happen then is the resistor will burn out because of heat so that could have been what's happened here I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm not going to guarantee it but that could be what's happened here uh, so what I think I'm going to do then is just give it another visual inspection just see if I can figure out anything with the rest of the power supply and it looks like we've definitely been subject to quite a lot of heat on this board um, there's a lot of discoloration to the components around the power regulation area so something's got pretty hot in here by the look of it and uh, that's obviously a bad thing because like I said those resistors are kind of like fuses in the sense that they will burn out with excessive heat so what I'm going to do first of all I'm going to take my multimeter and I'm going to pop the multimeter into continuity mode continuity mode is the mode that's going to beep when we complete the circuit and if we take a look at the multimeter you can see that we've got three symbols here we have a ohm symbol, we've got a speaker symbol and a diode symbol, so that is continuity mode. So this is a multifunction meter and the, the dial here has got three functions on it and then we can just select which one we want. So we've got diode mode, we've got ohms mode and we've got continuity mode. So like I said, that's the mode that's going to beep when we complete the circuit and that's going to tell us if we've got a short, without having to look at the multimeter, on the 12 volt rail so what I'm going to do to test that is I'm going to pop one probe on ground and I'm going to just use the ground that's on the USB port so that's grounded now so if I if I probe over here you can see that it's beeping it doesn't matter where I probe if it's a ground point it will beep and I'm going to test the 12 volt so the top three pins are all the 12 volt rail and the top the bottom three pins are the ground rails so these ones will will all have continuity that's normal and let's check the top ones and indeed we do we have a 6 ohm short and dropping 5 ohms and dropping that is a dead short to ground that means that we've definitely got a short on this area somewhere so what I'm going to do I'm going to hook up the thermal camera and I'm going to use the thermal camera to find this short Okay, so I've got my Flare 1 thermal camera here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this into my phone and then I'm going to hit record, I'm going to inject some voltage into the motherboard itself and the way I'm going to do that is by using some probes that I've got hooked up to my bench power supply and all I'm going to do is I'm going to inject around 2.5 volts we don't want to go the full 12 volts because if that goes through to the CPU then it's going to kill the CPU. So I'm going to use some bench probes here and these bench probes if we take a look here if I pop this into voltage mode and then probe the probes you'll see that I've got 1.92 volts on the bench power supply so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these probes here I'm going to pop one probe on ground and then I'm going to inject voltage into the top three rails on the power supply. I'm going to see if we get any current draw and we do, we get 1.10 amps so the basically there's current being sucked down to ground because we shouldn't get any kind of current draw apart from 0 0.01 amps which is standby until we actually turn it on and then it would ramp up the current draw so because there's a current draw without turning it on something's being pulled down to ground and generally that's going to cause a heat spot on the faulty component or around that faulty component so I'm going to hook my phone up now to the thermal camera I'll hit record I'll inject voltage at the 12 volt rail and then we'll see if we can figure out what's actually going on with this Okay, so what I'm going to do now then is just inject voltage into the thermal ca into the board, and then try and read it on the thermal camera what's going on. So we're injecting the voltage now, and we're drawing 1.09 amps, but we're not seeing anything major on the board right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to increase the voltage on the board. Okay, so I've increased the voltage now to 3.2 volts. And it looks like we're just starting to pick up some temperature. 
It looks like it's definitely on phase one. Still can't see the actual component though at 2.5 amps. So let's increase to 4 volts then. And there we go. So that is definitely showing some sort of a short now. That's at 30 degrees Celsius on that MOSFET. Okay, so let's see if we can pick that up a little bit better now. Right, okay, so let's increase a little bit more to 5 volts, 4.8 should be close enough. And we should probably get a full sort. Okay, so now I've got the use of two hands. Try and pinpoint this. Okay, I've got it. Right. Right, okay, so according to the thermal camera, the area which we need to focus on is around here. So around this MOSFET here. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to use another little trick now, and that's going to be to use some isopropyl alcohol and basically see what evaporates first. I couldn't pinpoint the exact location. I know it's around here somewhere, but it looked like this area was getting warm as well. So I want to just see basically what evaporates first when I inject voltage. So we're getting 3.2 amps current draw. And it looks like the MOSFET is getting warm first. So let's get that MOSFET removed and then we'll see if that clears the short. Okay, so there's that MOSFET removed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the multimeter again in continuity mode and just see if that short has gone so we'll pop one probe on ground again and if we bring this over here in view And the short is gone. We get open line. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so let's get a new MOSFET on there. Okay, so we can see where that resistor has definitely had a lot of heat on it. So what I want to do first is just check the resistor and make sure that we're still good. So I'm going to put my multimeter into ohms mode. And I'm just going to get the reading for that resistor. So, we get 21 ohms on that resistor there. So the resistor is actually reading fine, so I'm probably going to leave that as it is, to be honest. I will reflow it, just re refresh that joint a little bit, because it does look a little bit rough around the edges. Same as this little transistor here, that doesn't look too clever either. So that might be something to take note of a little later on. But what we'll do is we'll get this MOSFET replaced and then we'll go from there. So let's check this resistor here as well because this sometimes acts as a fuse. And we get 20 ohms. Okay, 
and that matches for that one there so that should be okay let's check this one here and that one's reading 20 ohms as well so what we'll do then is we'll just replace this MOSFET so what I want to do first is just replace the solder that's on there with some fresh leaded solder so it's had a little bit of flux around there and then I'm going to take a soldering iron and just replace the solder that's there and let's freshen up this joint as well Okay. Right, so let's get ourselves a brand new MOSFET then. So these MOSFETs cost around about 50 pence each if you buy them in lots of about 25. They're not too expensive. You can find them on all, the, all of the common suppliers such as DigiKey, Mosa, RS Components, all of those sort of, sort of sites. They're not expensive to buy and they are one of the most common problems on these particular consoles. So let's just get that replaced. So I'm going to reflow this into place with hot air. So pin number one is on the top right hand side. Okay, let's just clean that up. And that should be good. So now we're going to take some isopropyl alcohol and just clean off the flux. So I'm just going to make sure that it's all nice and clean, that there's no leftover residue. Okay, and that looks a lot better. So let's get this tested, shall we? Okay. So what I am going to do then is I'm not going to actually put this back together because we don't know if it's going to work or not sometimes what happens with these is you'll find one thing wrong you'll fix that and then it will develop another problem or the other problem hasn't showed up because the one problem is stopping it from showing up so what I'll do is I'll just put the heatsink back on put the power supply in and then just, and the hard drive and then just turn it on and hopefully it turns on and stays on if it turns, it turns to a beep on beep off, then it's probably going to be some sort of a, another issue with the RAM or the GPU. But let's hope for the best, shall we? So what we're looking for now is a quarter of a fan spin or around about that much of a fan spin and then it'll stop. Fingers crossed it does that when we plug this in. And we don't get that fan spin, so that might not be such a good, a good thing. It is still possible that it's going to work. You don't always get that fan spin, but we'll see. So let's take a power supply there. And this is my own power supply, not the customer's. So let's just try that. Let's plug the hard drive in and turn it on. And we still get absolutely nothing. Okay, right. So the power supply could have gone into sleep mode because we had it plugged in still and this had a short so it could have shut the power supply down so let's plug that in again and now we get the half fan spin okay so let's try and turn it on now and that turns on and stays on so this job looks like it's complete 
that's great news right so let's see if we can get something on the display I might have to end up plugging this into my monitor because I have been having some issues with my capture card lately so it might be a case where this isn't going to display anything and if that's the case then I'm going to have to plug it into my monitor and just use the phone camera right I believe that might have just overheated uh, yes it has okay right so that's just overheated on me because the thermal paste needs replacing so I'll get that done first I'll take this back apart I'll clean the fan replace the thermal paste on this and then I'll test it and hopefully it's going to work this time uh, we do have a really fast fan spin when that shut before that shut off so that does indicate a sh uh, issue with thermals so let's just take this heatsink back off it doesn't always do that but maybe this was just so old that it's just not doing its job at all and that's probably what's caused the MOSFET to burn out these do have operating temperatures and when the console gets that hot then it's going to cause problems with other components sometimes it causes an issue with the HDMI encoder IC sometimes it causes an issue with the power management side uh, it just depends which, uh, which thing burns out first to be honest so let's get rid of the old thermal paste off here then. You can see just how bad this thermal paste actually is. We would never have left it like that, but I didn't really want to put thermal paste on until I'd actually tested it to see if it was working. But it's fine. I can replace it now. It's not that much of an issue. Okay, so let's get some fresh thermal paste on here then. So I'm going to use my go-to thermal paste, that's MX4. Definitely one of the best thermal pastes you can get. It is a little bit more expensive, but it's definitely one of the best that you can get. So we've got some fresh paste on there. So I'm going to give the fan a brush down, because if this works, then there's no more reasons to take this off. Right, okay, so the fan's been cleaned, the heatsink has been cleaned, so this is ready to go back on. Fingers crossed it's going to work now and that we're not going to have any more thermal issues. <clears throat> I do strongly believe that the reason it shut down was because of thermal issues. And I also believe that this is probably the reason that it died in the first place. So, let's just get this back together. There we go. And... Then we'll get the fan back on. Don't want to put any pressure on the board itself, so we'll do it like this. There we go. And then we may as well put it back inside the chassis, and we may as well use the customer's power supply just to test that as well. So let's do that. Let's just put that in there. There we go. And let's get the customer's power supply now. There we go. So let's get the disk drive as well. We might as well get that done while we're at it. Okay. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to screw anything down. I just want to see it working before they actually put it back together. Always test before you put it back together. It's going to save you so much time if there is an issue. Because every time we put this back together, that's an extra five minutes. And then every time we take it back apart, that's another five minutes. So we may as well do it now. At least enough to be able to test it. And then that way we're saving ourselves ten minutes if there's nothing, if, if it's not working. Usually I like to save a little bit of time by testing it without replacing the thermal paste first but in this situation that's not possible but usually it is possible okay so let's get a HDMI cable as well let's plug that in I am fairly confident this is going to work now 
Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pop the front panel and also the Wi-Fi card in because we may as well. And that is not working with the customer's power supply. Interesting. That's quite interesting. So unless the power supply has just blown it again, which is possible, then we've got an issue with the customer's power supply. Let's try my own. It might be a case of the it needs a power supply as well. Right, let's leave that hanging out. There's that half fan spin we're looking at. Okay, so we have an issue with the power supply as well. I don't mess with power supplies, so I'm not going to be messing with that. Okay, let's switch to capture card and see if my capture card is going to work today. Okay, it's looking like my capture card's not going to work for some reason. I don't know why that is, but it does look as though my capture card isn't working. I will try it by plugging it in directly to the capture card instead of the HDMI switcher. I may just have too many devices plugged in. But I'm going to try and just plug it in like this. Okay, and there we go. Excellent. Okay, and as you can see, this is working absolutely fine. And it appears to be... Right, let's eject that. Right, so you can see now that the console has got FIFA 20 in. Uh, so that's great news. That means that this console is working. So I've had to load it through the camera app on my computer. Okay, so there's FIFA 20 just to uh, show you that. I'm going to shut this down, I'm going to get it back together, and then I'll give this a full test. So it, it is looking like, unfortunately, we do need to replace the power supply. I will check it once more, just to make sure, but it looks like it needs a power supply as well, unfortunately. I don't mess with the power supplies, they're not worth it. They carry very high voltage on the hot side. Uh, which is the the AC power side, so I'm not going to be messing with that. If it do, if it is broken, it will just go into the it will just go into the scrap pile and get replaced. They're cheap enough anyway. So yeah, okay. So that power supply appears to be completely dead. So that's going to need a power supply as well. Okay. So let's get this reassembled then, and then we can call this job hopefully done. We do need to do some more tests on it, like test the Wi-Fi and things like that. So we need to do a few more tests to make sure it loads in 1080p and 4K. Uh, but other than that, we are going to need... Uh, we pretty much are done with this. So... Let's just pop that in there. Because we're going to be replacing that. And there we go. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward through the reassembly process then. We've all seen this before, so we don't really need to see it again. And once we're done, we can give it a full test and hopefully call this one done. Okay, that is pretty much that, and let's give this another test now, so I'm going to give it a full test, make sure that we're getting Wi-Fi, make sure that we can set the resolution to 1080p, and 4K if it recognises it, because 
like I said, my capture card is playing up a little. So, unfortunately, I don't know if it's going to recognise 4K or not. That's the customer's disc right there. So, let me just see if it's going to pick up. So, desktop view. And there we go. So, that is picking up absolutely fine. Now, one thing I have just noticed is that my screen was actually recording my secondary screen. So, OBS was recording my secondary screen. So, I don't know whether or not this is actually going to show up on the final video for the preliminary testing that we did but as you can see here I've got my camera app loaded up and it is working it is loading up to the dashboard I'm not sure if it was showing up my secondary screen or not when I initially tested it so it might we might be we might have a case where I've got a little bit of lost footage but that's fine uh, the console appears to be working so I'm going to wait for it to load up to the dashboard and I'm also going to grab a controller um, I'm just going to test the sync button. Whoops, that was eject. My bad. Okay, so the sync button does sync or does show up as syncing. So let me find a USB lead. Okay, FIFA is loading up, so that's working fine. Okay, so I'm going to plug into the front USB port. Just make sure we get a controller working. And there we go, excellent. So on to the settings then. Uh, we're going to go for system. Console info and that appears to be working fine. Let's go for storage. 365 gigabyte, that's fine. TV and display. 4K UHD, so we're picking up in 4K. Let's try and switch to 1080, and that does work. And back to 4K. Excellent. Okay, so finally, let's make sure that we can connect to the network. Now, the network's not going to work in here because for some reason, Xbox Ones don't like my internet. I'm not sure why, but it does pick up, and it is showing up that we've got Wi Fi, so that's fine. Uh, let's see if I can connect to the uh, to the open network I've got. Checking connection. It might not connect. This Wi-Fi is in the house, so it might come up that it can't connect. I do get this with every Xbox for some reason. PlayStation seems to work fine, but Xbox just doesn't. Yeah, I can't connect to my DHCP server. Yeah, never mind. It's fine. Uh, it's going to work either way. Uh, it's picking up that the Wi-Fi is connected. I will do a full test off camera anyway, but that appears to be absolutely fine. So, let's shut this down. And there we go. So, this console is now working. I am a very happy, happy chappy. So let's just summarise this then. This console was sent in for no power and the easiest way that I've found to be able to determine no power when it doesn't turn on, doesn't beep or doesn't do anything, when there's no signs of life is to use the thermal camera. So this is a Fleur 1, I've actually got the box right here. And I bought this from Amazon for £208. It's not sponsored obviously but I absolutely love this thing, it's paying for itself already. I think this is the fourth time that I've diagnosed an issue with an Xbox with the thermal camera and it's the fourth time I've fixed the Xbox because of a thermal camera. So this thing is absolutely paying for itself. Uh, it is very expensive but it's definitely, definitely a well valuable, a very valuable piece of kit. So by replacing the one MOSFET and by replacing the power supply we've managed to get this console working again and the customer can game happy once again. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you want to see more repair videos where I mainly focus on consoles, but sometimes other things too, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notifications so that you're notified every time that I upload. I also now have channel members, so if you want to support the channel, you can become a member by, click, by clicking on the join button down below. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, See you later. Bye for now.